This problem we're going to do again by applying the log properties first. This looks like a really complicated problem and it would be if we didn't use log properties, but we are going to use log properties to break this up. First thing we'll notice is the square root can be written as a one-half power, so we'll start with that. So I have natural log, everything inside here, sine theta, cosine theta over 1 minus 4 natural log of theta, all that's going to be written to the one-half power to take care of the square root. The one-half power, you can bring that down front, so this can be written this way, one-half, I will do a natural log, sine theta, cosine theta, over one minus four natural log theta. So one-half is gonna be brought down front to here. Okay, so now that we've done that, we have to separate the LNs inside there. Now on top, I have a product, so there'll be a plus, and then since I'm doing division, I'll have a minus. So the way this works is anything that has a, it's positive, that's written on the top, will become a positive ln when you, when you uh, separate it. Anything on the bottom, that means we'll have to have a negative sign in front of the natural log. So here's what that looks like. You'll have one half, and I'm gonna put this in brackets. Now we'll separate it. You're gonna do a natural log of sine theta plus natural log cosine theta minus natural log 1 minus 4 natural log theta. So see what I did there? I did the two things that were on top were uh, positive. So I'm gonna make that look like an N. Okay, so ln sine theta plus ln cosine theta and then minus because this one's on the bottom, you have that one. So that's the correct way to break that up by using law properties. And then of course we can multiply all that through by a 1 half if you want to. So we can do 1 half ln sine theta, one-half ln cosine theta, minus one-half ln one minus four natural log theta. So now I've, I'm ready to take the derivative because I have it broken up into three separate terms. To apply the derivative, we're going to use that u primed over u formula to each one of these because every one of these has something inside that's not just a regular theta. So u primed over u we'll do here. So the one-half comes down, and then we're multiplying it by u primed over u. The, the, uh, the u is sine theta, so we'll put that on the bottom. The derivative of sine is cosine. That's your u prime, that's gonna go on top. Next, one half. Cosine goes in the bottom, because that's, this time that's your u. On top it's gonna be u prime. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I have a minus one half. Okay, now this one, the part inside the parentheses goes on the bottom because that's your u. On top, I want to take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. Derivative of one is zero. I have a minus four, and then I'm multiplying it by the derivative of ln theta, which in this case is one over theta. So now I just have to clean this up to get my final answer. Cosine over sine, we can write that as cotangent theta. There's a minus on this one, minus one half. Sine over cosine is tangent theta. For this one, I have negative, negative will give me a plus. I have a four divided by two, which is gonna give me a, a two. But then on the bottom, I'll have this. Now if you take this one over theta divided by 1 minus 4 ln theta over 1, if you flip all that, the theta is going to end up on the bottom here and you get 1 minus 4 natural log theta. And so this would be your final answer. You don't need to get common denominators. It's sufficient just to write your answer like this in this form. We're bringing back the e to the x's again here, so we want to review that. So this problem involves e's and ln's. Now nothing cancels out here because you've got a one plus and a one minus. So even though it looks like you could cancel and just get x for the answer, you can't. This is another one we have to break up using the log properties. So first thing we'll do is we're gonna separate this as a division. We're gonna do ln one plus e to the x minus ln one minus e to the x. Okay, so it's the first thing we do is apply the log property. Now that that's done, we can use the formula u primed over u for each of these to find the derivative. Okay, so for the first one, one plus e to the x is gonna go 
on the bottom, u primed goes on top. Derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of e to the x is itself. So derivative of e to the x is e to the x. I have minus. This one, the u is 1 minus e to the x, that's going to go on the bottom. On top, I want to take that derivative, derivative of 1 is 0. I have a negative here, and then derivative of e to the x is again itself, so I get e to the x. I can write this as e to the x over 1 plus e to the x, and then negative negative will give me a plus here, plus e to the x over 1 minus e to the x. It left me some space so I can apply the common denominators step here. So I'm going to do 1 plus, uh, 1 minus I need to do here to get the common denominator. So I'll do 1 minus e to the x top and bottom. This one's going to be 1 plus e to the x top and bottom. On the bottom we'll have our common denominator 1 plus e to the x and then 1 minus e to the x. On top I'm going to distribute this, I get e to the x and I get minus and then when you multiply this I get e to the 2x because you're actually adding exponents, x plus x will give you a 2x there. And you have plus e to the x here times the 1, and then if you do e to the x times e to the x again, you get e to the 2x. So what's going to happen here is the e to the 2x's, those are both going to cancel, negative and positive. These two are like terms, you have a 1 e to the x and a 1 e to the x that will give you 2 e to the x. So here's your final answer. You have a 2 e to the x, in the bottom you have 1 minus e to the x, 1 plus e to the x, and we can just leave our answer like that in that form.